Hi, I'm a little bit excited and I'm so happy to be here right now. I'm Delara Ukert, I'm 26 years old, I'm an astrophysicist and software developer from Berlin. And I have a dream. I want to become the first Muslim astronaut with hijab in Germany. And maybe you will ask, why? Because it was one of a dream from my father. My father once told me he wanted to be, become an astronaut, but because of some family reasons and some financial reasons, my father told me he needed to shut down his dream. And once he told himself, when my first child, it doesn't matter if a boy or a girl, come to the world, he promised himself that his daughter or his son will become an astronaut. And the luckiest person is me. And he showed me from the beginning, since my birth, the astronomy, the sky, the stars, the planets, everything, the beautiful view of the nature. But with the time, I see some differences, some obstacles, because I'm wearing the hijab. So I always ask myself, is it possible to become an astronaut? So if I'm going to see this image from the first German astronaut, Alexander Gers, and he took a selfie in space, it gives me motivation and strength that I have become an astronaut with hijab too. But the problem also is he is a man and I'm a woman. So let's continue into the past because it's super important to look how was the space travel war in the past. So let's go into our spaceship and travel in the past 60 years ago. We know 1961. Yuri Gagarin was the first human in space with the Vostok 1. Amazing. When the space flight official began. Only two years later, the second human in space were a woman, Valentina Treshkova, flew with a Vostok 6, and she was almost three days in space and orbited Earth 48 times. Also amazing. Only a few years later, the Apollo missions in America from the NASA begins already. And NASA said, OK, Russia goes to the space, but we want to go to, to the moon. OK, let's start. So the problem was 1967. Apollo 1 was a fail. All the crew members died. But they don't give up to go to space, to, uh, to go to the moon. There were also much more Apollo missions almost in the sum up, 17 Apollo missions. But the most important was the Apollo 11, where the first women in space were Neil Armstrong and his crew, both Adrian, where you can see here on the, on the photo, and took the f uh, first footprint on the moon. Amazing. But the problem is that all of these Apollo missions were all men. And that disturbs a little bit. That's why I need a question to myself. Because I thought about something. We know that humans are capable of reaching the stars and set the food on the moon, like the Apollo 11 mission. And the first man on the moon was Neil Armstrong, Evson. But no woman has ever walked on the moon. But why? There is a famous quote I found on the internet. It's from Sue Nelson. It's an ordinary human from the Earth. And once he said, only 12 people have set food on the moon, and all of them have been men. 
but none of them could have got there without the effort and expertise of women. That's true. So we see that we got a lot of space travel to the past time. We go to space, we go to the moon, but all were men. But no women, but only a few of them. So if you're going to sum up all the space travels from 60 years ago until now, it was 562 humans were in space, included with the moon missions. On the moon were 12 men, and in the sum up, 499 men, and only 63 women were in space. But I'm not included the new SpaceX missions right now from 2021, already starts. So the next question is, is it possible or are there any possible reasons of women not being in space? Because I'm asking myself, so many men were in space, but only a few women were in space too. I think there were some uh, reasons what the problem is. So a few reasons were like body effects, because scientists or normal humans think body effects have an effect on the menstruation during the gravity. Is that a problem? I, think, I don't think so. Or most of the people say uh, that women can't wear an astronaut suit like a man. Is that also a problem? No, it isn't. Or are there any physical reasons? No, because a man can be more strength than a woman, but it doesn't matter at all. But there is also a reason what all the world is discussing about social roles, being a mother. Is that the opportunity what a, what a woman do, uh, need to do in her life? Let's look at her. Anna Lee Fisher it was the first woman in space as a mother. She gave birth to her daughter, and three days later, she go to space. During her pregnancy, she did the astronaut, astronaut thing to go to space. So let's have a look at the astronaut suit, because so many people think that we can't wear an astronaut suit. For example, like, okay, you're wearing a hijab, or uh, you don't wear a hijab, maybe you can't wear a spacesuit too. So yeah, if you're going to look at this spacesuit, you will think, oh, okay, so everything can fit in. So it doesn't matter if you're a man or a girl. So that's all right. Everyone can wear the spacesuit, because we saw in the previous images that also women and men can wear the spacesuits too. And if we're going to see the modern spacesuit from today, from 2021, the SpaceX spacesuits, there were also a lot of men and women wearing the spacesuits too. It doesn't matter how you look like, how you, much you weight, it doesn't matter at all. You can wear a spacesuit too. So there is one more challenge for me. As an aspiring astronaut, <laughs> yeah, there is one more. You need to go. Thank you. Uh, there is one more challenge for me as an aspiring astronaut, because for some reasons, next to sexism, I exper experienced due to anti-Muslim racism, this piece of fabric this one, could prevent me to go to space or could be potentially dangerous for me. Look at this. I wore a neoprene suit to go to dive because it's almost important to, if you want to become an astronaut, that you, lean, that you learn to dive in the water because it has the same feeling to flying in space. So if you go to dive, Next time, you can experience the feeling like you were in space, like you're doing a spacewalk. Amazing feeling. So, 
let's wrap it up at all. So we talked about, or we asked ourselves the question, how many women were in space? Only 11 percent, 63 women until now. And the other one is, is there one plausible argument for not being able to go to space? Absolutely not. And finally, is it possible to go to space with a hijab? Let's talk about the role models. There were a lot of role models in the world. Hijabis going in different areas, working like a scientist in engineering and a lot of more. But I haven't seen a hijabi woman going to space. And that's why it's super important to me to change this moment. So there is finally this year a Muslima. She called Noura Al-Matrushi. She's from Saudi Arabia and she's officially an astronaut to go to space, hopefully. And we hope to see and learn a lot from her, what she will do in the space, because I'm also excited how it will be look like when she wear the astronaut suit with a hijab. That's why, let me ask you one more time. Is the hijab a hindrance for me to grab the stars? No, it's not. Because you are a shining star, no matter who you are. Shining bright to see what you can truly be. I'm Dilara Uykert. I'm an astrophysicist, software developer, and my life mission is to become the first Muslim astronaut with hijab in Germany. And I know I can do it, and we can change the world too. Thank you.